Hey everyone, good morning. I hope you're having a good day. Uh, I'd like to take a look at doing a little series for the Sony Open Devices projects. Um, I feel this would be helpful for those that are interested in working with the Sony Open Device or Open Source projects. And um, this is a phone that I have and it's of great interest to myself. And um, I hope that it will be interesting to you guys as well. The instructions are pretty straightforward, um, but I have run into a few glitches here and there, so I'd like to walk through it with everybody, and that way uh, if anybody else has questions on how to do this, they can do it for themselves as well. So what am I talking about? The Sony Open Devices projects, uh, as it says here. For some of the Xperia devices, we provide Android open source project device configurations on GitHub. This means that the software will be open for you as a developer to use and contribute to. This is a way for us to support the open Android community and it is also a tool for us to facilitate and verify contributions to Android open source project. So, uh, you know, just a quick uh, web search for Sony Open Devices Project will bring you right to this page. Uh, we're here on the uh, Get Started page, and it has lots of really great information in here um, that you can check out. Uh, how to unlock your bootloader, how to use uh, flashing tools, uh, supported devices, and uh, that might be handy to look at some supported devices uh, briefly. We see a list of the supported devices. I do apologize for a slight lag on the screen here using uh, VNC so we can actually uh, utilize one of my better servers for building so when we get to the build process it'll look a little smoother and it'll actually uh, work a little better. But you can see the maintained devices and legacy devices. This is the code that they have uh, for various uh, devices in here. Um, and uh, you can see the uh, XA2 um, and then the XA2 Ultra, which is the phone that I have, uh, is in this list right here. Um, but if you're interested in some of the Xperia devices, you really should check that out. Uh, there's a lot of really good resources here for you to use for building custom ROMs. So then we go to our guides and we go to build instructions and uh, it says you know below you'll find your step-by-step -step instructions and so you can build for the various different uh, Android versions of the Android open source project we're gonna go ahead and go to uh, Android 10.0 because well that's the latest and greatest and that's what we want to see uh, just so you know, I have successfully built AOSP 10.0 for the Discovery, and I do have that available on XDA uh, for people to download and to use. And so this is really great, though, so you can uh, check this out and see how the build process works. But uh, also, we know that the end result is going to be good, even though this is an experimental um, build environment right now because they haven't finalized working on the kernel. So one of the benefits of using the Sony Open Device Project is the kernel. So the kernel for the discovery is uh, version 4.4 but using the Sony Open Device Project uh, I've built Android 10 with kernel version 4.9 that's fully functional and then I've built some uh, 4.14 versions that are not quite as functional but getting there. So it does allow you to use a newer kernel than the device originally came out with which is really really handy. So of course we're gonna walk through this whole process as if we're starting from ground zero even though I've already installed uh, OpenJDK and all of these build tools but we're just gonna walk through the process together course you need your uh, terminal and you're going to need a lot of space so uh, in this case uh, if we look at disk free dash H and we'll grep uh, SD for the devices uh, in this case I actually have a 16 terabyte uh, RAID array that we're going to be building on so that's pretty handy because lots of space available for what we need to do uh, you don't need that much space as we pointed out in the AOSP 
10 building guides. Uh, 400 gigabytes is going to be plenty of space for you to download all the source code uh, and build for several devices. You could probably get away with about 250 gigabytes uh, if you're being a little judicious and careful about the use of your space. So, uh, that being said, the first set of commands is here to um, apt-get purge your OpenJDK, Ice-T, and Ice-T6, right? So you would just highlight all of that and you would paste it here into the window. And what this command does is it uninstalls any OpenJDK or Ice-T or Ice-T6 that you have installed. I actually do not want to do that because I already have Java installed but I wanted to show you the command. It'll just go through and remove any of the uh, of those files that you have, those programs that you have installed. So it'll say a guide will appear on the screen, further instructions to uh, follow the instructions to remove Java. Once the Java is removed, it wants you to sudo apt-get update. We'll type in our super secret squirrel password. And so apt-get update, all it's doing is going out and fetching the latest list of available programs for you to download. So you know that whatever you're going to download is going to be the latest and greatest. And in this case, some of mine might be, you know, a little out of date. They may have come up with some new ones since then. So then the next command is going to be to sudo apt-get install openjdk-8-jdk take a look at that here. So it's done updating. It's read the package list. It's done. I'm going to paste this in here. Of course I've already got OpenJDK 8 installed but there might be a newer version. No, it says this is already the newest version. But if not it would ask you do you want to install this? Press Y for yes. And then it says uh, to run this code Java version. So what this is is running the Java program and saying what version of Java that you have installed on your machine. So in this case I have 1.8.0 underscore 222. And uh, at the time when they wrote this they only had underscore 91. So I'm already far more advanced than the one when they wrote the guide. That's fine. So we'll scroll down to the next step. Right? I really like these little buttons. You can just click next. That's kind of cool. Alright, so install the necessary tools to make an Android build. So we highlight all of this just by triple clicking it. We go back to our terminal. We're going to middle click to paste that all in. So what this is doing is this is going out and apt-get is going to look at that list of available programs and it says I want the latest version of all of these programs I want to download them and install them on your computer. And of course mine is already the newest version but it would ask you if you haven't installed any of these or all of them it would say do you want to install this it's going to take this much space yes or no and so you push Y for yes or uh, of course N for no and then you would move on with your instructions. Of course the next step is going to be the uh, repo tool and setting our path. We saw this in the last video but I do want to cover it yet again. So it's saying make der bin and this tilde actually tells it to make that directory in your home directory, right? And when I type this, it's actually going to go ahead and tell me that I already have that bin, right? It already exists, so it won't create it again. But if you didn't have that before, it would go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to get the latest version of bin repo. There might actually be a newer version of this, so this is a good thing to run every now and then. Again, I just triple clicked on it. Now I'm middle clicking to paste that into my terminal window. It's going to download that. Curl is a program that goes out and downloads something off of the internet for you. So it downloaded that latest version of the repo 
uh, tool. We're going to chmod, which is to change or modify a plus x, so readable and executable for the home folder bin repo file. So we're making it executable, which means it's a command that can be run. So we paste that in there. And now that is available for us to use. And then it tells us how we can add this to our path, right? Mine is already added to the path, but you can go through these few steps right here. Again, just double click on them, or excuse me, triple click. You'll put them into the terminal and you can add it to your path. I've already added it to my path, so I don't want to re-add that path to my path, if that makes sense. Uh, like I said, very straight, very straightforward, very nice. So we need to initialize the AOSP tree, right? And so it's saying that we are supposed to build with a particular branch, Android 10.0.0 underscore revision 10. Now currently they're up to revision 14, but what this instruction is saying is that they have set up the kernels and all of their files and everything to work with revision 10 at the moment. So they recommend using that and they do upgrade this from time to time. So uh, it doesn't mean you can't build with a newer revision. It's just that they recommended revision 10 at this point in time. So I'm going to follow the instructions here. We're going to make directory and it says to make it home Android, right? You can do that for yourself. I actually have a special drive, this RAID array with the 16 terabytes that I want to put it in. So I'm going to make directory Android and I'm going to call it SODP10. I like to make it very specific because I have multiple things on my computer at one time. If you only have one thing, you may not need to be that specific. And then we're going to CD to change directory and go into that folder that we just made, uh, that Android SODP 10. And while we're here, if we type LS, it's to list all the contents of that folder and there's nothing in there. Now if you need some help with basic Linux commands, I do have some videos uh, specific to teaching you how to use Linux. It's called Linux 101. It's a playlist with uh, several videos that show how to use uh, listing files and copying and editing and that sort of thing. Please check that out if you need some help with basic Linux commands. I know Linux is not everybody's first uh, you know, operating system that they've used. So if you're uh, not familiar with how to use it, please check out my videos. I think that will be helpful for you. So we're here in our Android folder and we're going to repo init and we're going to initialize this repository with all of the source code for Android's open source project from Google and uh, we're going to choose a specific branch. Now notice it says dash B and then it says branch and we're going to use this branch right here but for right now I'll highlight this portion notice I'm not taking that branch part punch that in here, put a space and I'm going to highlight this Android 10 part for which branch we're going to build and I middle click to put that in there and now I press enter and it's going to think about that for just a minute this portion actually only takes a moment where it uh, goes through and it looks to see essentially downloads a list of how many different repositories are there how many different uh, things is it going to have to download and then it's going to uh, number them as projects and say okay I have this many projects that I need usually it's between six and eight hundred projects depending on what you're building now notice that uh, there's objects, so there's 912 objects, and then there's all these receiving objects that it's doing. That's the objects of the lists and things like that that it needs. Uh, I do have some videos where I specifically go in depth into repo sync. Uh, definitely worth checking out, and uh, some of them I give tips and 
uh, tricks for downloading less source code um, and how you can save some space doing it that way. When you're doing the Sony Open Device Project, I prefer not to download less source code because during the next few steps, we're actually going to see where we're going to download some local manifests that are going to edit the files that we have. And so it's good to have a good portion of the source code downloaded to do this part because it's going to be selecting some older material for a few things and editing some things and going to different revisions and uh, some things like that. So it's really handy if you already have all of that downloaded for the Sony Open Device project. Uh, I'm not saying you have to do it that way, I'm just saying that it works out really well for me. So while this downloads, we'll look at our next command here. The next command that we're going to do is going to be adding our local manifests. So we see it's going to have us change into this dot repo. So a dot folder, a folder with a dot at the front, is a folder that's hidden. So right now if we look in our files, we see our Android 10 uh, SODP 10 and I have hidden files shown so if I control H normally we just see folder is empty and control H again we see the hidden files and in here we have this repo which is this repository and it's filling up with all of the stuff from initializing that we see right here so we are initialized um, you know as Alaska Linux user all of this sort of thing here uh, and then it gives us this command that we're going to change directory and get into that repo that we just made. So, go into that repo folder. So now, looking at the folders that we are, we're in this folder. We've gone change directory into this folder. We're here. And now that we're here, we're going to get clone and download this. Okay, and I'll show you that as we do it. So git clone, it is going to go uh, get uh, and clone, make a copy of this repository right here, github.com, Sony Xperia device, local manifest. Okay, good to know. And then it wants us to cd into that directory, so cd local manifest and we see if we look at our files that this local manifest is now new we can click on it we're now inside of it and we see lots of good stuff and notice that it says get checkout branch okay so there's different versions and different branches of what you can use okay if we take this right here and we'll just copy that open up a new window here and we'll just paste and go to that we'll see that we have the different branches that we want so in our case you probably want a branch that matches uh, whatever it is that you're working on so in our case we did a 10 dot zero dot zero underscore uh, revision 10 was what we had done before and we see that that folder does in fact exist so that's the branch that we're going to want which is why they specified which branch up here that you wanted to use for the source code from Google and for the source code from this local manifest so we're going to get checkout branch in this particular branch So git check out, and then we paste in that particular branch. And it's going to make sure that that's the branch that's actually in use right now. So this may or may not make a lot of sense depending on how much you use git, uh, github, gitlab. Um, I do have some videos on that. I do highly recommend you watch them if you don't understand what I just did. But essentially, I'm saying I want to use not the master branch that we're normally on, 
and not some other branch but actually this branch so if we click on this branch we see it looks very much like the master branch right now okay but watch if I choose a different branch so right now we have this LAUM71R1XML and if I choose some other branch let's say Android 7 really old right so we see LAUM5.7 so it's not the same so then whatever is in this particular folder will reflect whatever branch that I chose off of this list like I said, I do have lots of videos uh, specific to using GitHub, GitLab, and Git, as well as Git Kraken. Uh, so please check those out if you have any questions about what we just did. So now it just wants us to change directory and go back to the main directory. So we're in our main directory, Android SODP underscore 10. Uh, we can see that here. This is where we are is this Android SODP underscore 10, right? And if we look, the folder is empty, not showing the hidden files. And if we do an ls to list the files in here, we see there's nothing. If we ls dash lah to see the hidden files, we'll see that repo folder, just like if we came up here and hit control H and we see that repo folder. All right, so now we're ready to repo sync. This is that command that takes forever to run, okay? And uh, so we repo sync. Now you can specify a number of threads. You can say I want one, two, four, four thousand, however many you can support with your uh, system. Uh, the more threads that you have, the more system utilities and resources are going to be used and the more internet that is going to be utilized as well. So just something to keep in mind if you want to use the internet while you're waiting for this repo sync to finish, uh, you know, you could give it a J and a smaller number like two or something like that. I think by default it does four, but uh, you know, don't quote me on that. So anyways, just running repo sync uh, should run at full speed or you could choose a higher J number if you happen to be able to support that. So we'll give that a second to get going so we can watch it in action for a second. And this will actually bring us to our end of our video today because this is going to take many hours on my very slow internet to finish. And so I won't be able to get back to this until uh, some other time. So uh, hopefully that was helpful for you getting set up to build the SODP. Um, we're going to be building the Sony Open Device uh, using the o Sony Open Device project to build Android Open Source project for the discovery and uh, I think that uh, uh, it's going to be a pretty fun little adventure. A lot of little tiny differences that we just saw between the normal setup for AOSP and for what we're doing now and we're going to see a few more changes uh, specifically as we want run the repo update shell script um, in in the next step so hopefully that was helpful and interesting to you and uh, I hope you also have a great day